In this video, I'm going to put my UX researcher hat on and talk about how to create a foundational research report. If this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, thanks for tuning in. I'm Femke and I'm a product designer living in Amsterdam. And as a product designer, I work very closely with the UX researchers on my team. Often we participate in research together, whether it's going on trips or conducting surveys or doing some foundational and preliminary research so that we can learn about the problem space. So I really wanna to focus today on how to take the insights that you may have learnt during the research phase and put them into a report that you can then share out with your team. But maybe you don't have researchers on your team or you are the researcher. So you might be responsible for actually doing this foundational research and creating the report that gets shared out with the team. These kind of foundational reports are really important and valuable to the rest of the team because they're probably going to use the insights that you uncovered to make big decisions about what they want to build and the direction that they want to take for the product. In my team, we often create these reports as a Google slide presentation. And that's really handy because people can go through it in their own time and also leave comments if they want extra clarification or want to discuss certain things. You could also run an actual session where you could go through the report in person with the team, or you could just send it out in an email. I've also seen some people actually create a sort of more email newsletter where instead of creating a slide presentation, they have everything in a newsletter and send it via email. And that's another way that you could do it too. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to walk through an example of using a Google slide presentation to create your research report. And if you find this helpful, you can actually head on over to my website and subscribe to my newsletter and I'll actually send you this Google slide template that you can use in your team totally for free. You don't need to credit me or anything like that. I want to give it to you as a resource that you can use so that you can just get started straight away. So let's imagine that you've gone out there, you've done the preliminary research, you've conducted a few studies or tests or, you know, whatever methodology you use. And now you've come back to the office and you have all of these notes and these learnings and these experiences that you want to put together into a report to share with the team. So let's jump into the presentation. The first thing you want to start with is the research scope. What did this research set out to do? What kind of problems did you set out to solve? Were you perhaps going out there to deepen your understanding of a particular feature that you already have? Learn about a potential new opportunity to build a new product or to learn about how an existing feature is already being perceived? State the intent and the objective of the research. The next good thing to state is the geographical area where the research was conducted. I work at a large tech company, so our research could be done anywhere in the world. Sometimes we do research in Cairo or Mexico City or Bangalore. So make sure you state the geographical area so people have that context. The last thing to state here is the different kinds of methodologies that you used to do this research. Did you do interviews? If so, who with? How many people? Did you do user testing? Maybe you did workshops or co-creation sessions. Just state a little bit up front the different research methodologies that we used so people understand how this research was actually done. The next section is the participant criteria. So who actually was involved in this research? And here you want to go a little bit more into detail about who these people were and why you chose them. What are the demographics of these people that made them so unique and special to test with? Maybe you also want to identify different cohorts of people. So, I don't know, maybe one cohort you had was uh, people over the age of 50 who use smartphones. And another cohort might be people over the age of 50 who don't use smartphones. You know, it's kind of interesting to get this mix of different kinds of people that you're testing with. It's also good to state how many people participated because Having only three people versus 30 is definitely going to give you different results. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Following on from participant criteria is key insights. And this is basically the too long, didn't read section of your report. Imagine someone opened this research report to get a quick takeaway of the overall insights. What do you want them to take away from this report? What are the sort of key insights, the golden nuggets, the important and valuable information that they should take away from this. I recommend having no more than six key insights. And I also really encourage having the key insight being super short and snappy. And then underneath each, you can give a little bit of extra context, maybe one to two sentences max, just so that people can digest this information really easily and quickly. Next comes the competitive landscape. 
It's always good to take a little bit of a look around and see what competitors are also doing in this space. What I like to do is I'll often sign up for competitors' experiences and then actually document my experience in this report. You could take screenshots, you could make a little video about you know, what your key thoughts were about that experience. But it's good to kind of try maybe three different competitors and document a little bit what their experiences are like and what their product offering is. I like to include in this section what the value proposition of the competitor is, what their customers are saying, and then also the, the pros and cons of their service. Doing this I think also kind of helps paint a picture for those reading the report to kind of understand and get a sense of where we or you kind of sit in the overall competitive landscape. Now moving on to potentially one of the most valuable parts of this report, which is diving into your personas or archetypes. So ideally from the discussions that you had with the participants, you kind of got a sense for who the different kind of personas are for this product or this project. So it's good to kind of state who those personas are. And also there's a few things that I recommend including for each persona. The first is the potential product opportunity for this persona. So if we built X, this persona could really benefit from it because Y. It's also helpful to state their goal, what their motivations are, what's important to them, and also potentially any specific demographics that might come up, although this sometimes isn't always applicable. If it makes sense in your case, another nice thing you could do is plot your personas against a X and Y axes. This can sometimes help sort of visualize a comparison between the personas and also kind of highlight more of those different archetypes and how you could maybe choose a specific few to focus on. This can sometimes too help you give a good indication of maybe like more popular personas, like where there's sort of a common trend or a cluster like, oh, we saw a lot of people really represented this persona. And then, you know, this persona over here, well, there were only really a couple of people that represented that group. So this can kind of also help you decide which persona to focus on and which to really dive deeper into. Next is product feedback. So this is the section where you can talk a little bit about what the response was from the participants about the products or the feature that you're actually building. Maybe you showed your participants a prototype or maybe you didn't have a prototype yet. You had nothing to show, but you just wanted to have a discussion about the problem space that you're looking into. Well, here in this section, you can document all of the learnings from this discussion. For me, often in these preliminary research phases, we don't often show prototypes, but rather we just have a blue sky kind of conversation. Uh, we tend to kind of get deeper into sort of learning about the problem space, how it relates to that particular person, any experiences that they've had with that problem space, uh, what the perfect solution might look like, what's important to them. It's more of a discussion uh, that's really valuable to us as a team because we can use that to kind of kick off the design and it helps us get thinking about what might the solution actually look like. The feedback in this section in particular will be extremely valuable to product managers, the designer and also content strategists as well because this feedback here is going to help lead the direction of the product. If you have it, it's good to include video snippets. Uh, maybe you took some videos while you were doing some testing or having a discussion. If you have photos, it's also really, really handy to put in here. And I also like to include pull quotes from the people that we interviewed. They can be super, super powerful. They don't have to be very long. It can just be, you know, one or two super interesting things that somebody said. Having them as a standalone slide can be extremely powerful. So to structure this section, I recommend having a slide for each key finding. And then on that slide, have the key finding there as the most important top of hierarchy thing on that page. Then you wanna have any observations that you had about that finding, potential opportunities, and then also participant quotes. If you were testing a prototype or testing screens here, then it's also nice to include that screen as well on this slide to help give it a bit more context so people can see visually what was being discussed in that moment. Those are the main meaty things that make up the report, but it's always good to end a report with next steps. So now we've done all of this research, what are we gonna do next? Here, you might include some how might we statements that you came up with or, or maybe you did it with the team. 
You could also put in some suggestions. Maybe these are suggestions for product to take on board or for the designer to take on board. And then lastly, any unanswered questions that you or the team might have. Maybe some common themes or topics came up that you and your team weren't expecting or don't know much about. So you can include that as a unanswered question and something to look further into. And that's how I recommend putting together your research report full of your foundational and preliminary findings. As I mentioned, the template that I used in this video is completely free for you to use. Just head on over to my website, sign up to my newsletter, and I'll send you the template to use in your team. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.